Hi, I'm Kristen at icstarsquilting.com. Today we're going to go over the Atomic Starburst Quilt Pattern by Violet Craft. If you're new to paper piecing or you come looking for a little bit of guidance, I'm going to go over all the tips that I used on each template to help you out. See if I can explain this a little bit better for you. While the directions are really great and if you're fantastic at paper piecing, you're going to love this pattern because it turns out so cool. But if paper piecing is a little bit new to you or you're having a bit of trouble on this one, um, visualizing exactly where it needs to go, this is going to be what's going to help you with that. So I have all my pieces laid out right here, as you can see. Um, I have them corresponding in the order that I'm going to put them down. You can see my pieces are very rough cut. The beauty with paper piecing is it doesn't matter what your pieces look like. It is going to turn out fantastic. The A side right here and the B side are exactly the same thing. Okay, so you just need to make sure that you have whatever colors you do on here, you need to have an exact replica on the other side. So you need an A side and a B side for each one. Tools you will also need are your rotary cutter, you know, whichever one you have, make sure it's got a nice good sharp blade on it, that's always helpful. And then this little handy tool is something else that I really um, suggest that if you don't have, you should purchase for these paper piecing projects. It's called an add a quarter ruler and I'll zoom in a little bit, hopefully that's clear there, add a quarter ruler. If you can see on the side of this ruler, see that little lip right there? This is going to come into play in a little bit, okay? So I'll show you when we get to that point. You will also need your cutting mat and your sewing machine, okay? So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take this pattern piece that you have here and you're going to get your A1 piece, okay? This is the most important step. Everything after this is good, okay? Put it behind the side that is clearly printed, okay? So I'm putting it on the back, but you want your fabric facing up, okay? If you hold it up to the light, see how it goes on all sides of my A1 piece, all right? As well as around this dotted edge border, okay? So you want it to fill completely that A1 square. This next part, once you have that piece down, just like that, okay? You're holding it. You are welcome to pin it just to kind of make sure that it stays in place. Just slip a tiny little pin right there. Uh, you do not have to do this. If you are doing this Atomic Starburst quilt, I guarantee by the end of 40 of these, yes, 40, you will be able to do this in your sleep and not have to pin it. But if it makes you feel more comfortable or if you're kind of worried things are gonna slide around a bit or if you cut it really close on all of these sides, you need to make sure that you have at least a quarter inch around um, all sides of your piece here, but you're welcome to put a pin in it. The next step you're going to do is A2, okay? So that's this little bitty strip right here. I cut them really big, all right? I mean, essentially you can see that it totally fills up that A2 space. Next, I want you to place it on the back, right sides together, okay? Because that is what is going to make your paper piecing stand out because essentially we're gonna sew right here along this line right here, and then we're gonna press it out like this. Okay, so this is what it's gonna look like in the end. But right now, I want you to work from this side and where we are going to sew, let me grab this, where we're going to sew is along this line right here between A1 and A2, okay? So make sure that you are not sewing over here, all right, because you want your piece to fold from this side over, all right? So the bulk of your piece is always gonna be away from the next piece that you are sewing on. So, let me see if I can turn this a little bit where you can see a little bit more. Um, right now I'm just making sure that I can feel A2 right there. And I'm gonna go a little bit over, all right? Here is another tip for you. If you can remember this while you're sewing, that's fine for me when I was doing this. I went through every single piece and I made this line right here that I'm doing right now, okay? This is to help you remember that this line, when you're sewing between A2 and A3, sew all the way to this edge over here, okay? So outside this dotted line 
it is going to make your paper piecing so much better when you go to trim it off. And you're not take your piece and lay it down. And then I want you to stitch from here to here. Always go, also, always go just a little bit beyond that line, all right? Don't worry about this other line right now. It's not a big deal. We'll get to that in just a minute. Okay, so I just sewed. I tried to use colored thread, so hopefully it'll show up a little bit better. But this is the top side, okay? This is the bottom side. So I am sewing where I can see this line right here all the way perfect, okay? Next step is you're going to press, okay? You can finger press. I actually preferred getting the whole iron contraption out and sewing. While you are doing this, it really helps to have a workstation set up that is essentially a triangle. You want a cutting station, a sewing station, and a pressing station. You're going to go back and forth between these stations a ton. So if at all possible, you can you know, squeeze a little table next to your sewing machine, or if you have a big giant table, you should be good to go. But make sure that you have those three things within reach because you're going to be jumping up and down with them a lot. Okay. So for this, I'm just going to kind of finger press it because we're not really that far into it right now. If you have a little roller or something, that's good too. Whatever will keep it down. Okay. Uh, honestly, you're probably pretty good to take the pen out right now. Um, unless you're just, you know, have a lot of fabric back here and you're worried about it getting in the way. Okay, so now have our side pressed nice and neatly. I forgot one thing you might need. This, it's cheap as in it's totally free. It's just a piece of cardstock, something that's a little bit sturdier, okay? I want you to take, okay, so we just sewed A1 and A2. I want you to take it on the other side of A2, all right? And then press up, just like so, okay? Now, let me get all my stuff out of the way because I'm working on a much, much smaller table here. You're going to get out your cutting mat. Okay? Just like so. All right. So we have that nice and pressed up against there. You can see it did right there on that line. Okay? Now it's time to take your add a quarter ruler. You are going to bump this little trench or this little side right there right up against here and I think I, I got this ruler on Amazon it really was like six dollars maybe I can't remember but it um it wasn't a big giant investment okay so you see what it did there it added a quarter inch to my oops there it is to my seam right there okay so then you push it back down all right now that was between a1 and a2 now we're not going to worry about the rest of this right now because we're going to go to A3, which is this piece. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're going to, again, if the fabric is folding this way, you're gonna make sure that the bulk of your fabric is going away from that, okay? Because you are going to take it and you're going to fold it this way. It's. I don't mean to repeat myself, but while you're doing this, especially if you have distractions going on in the house or other people are around, I swear, you have to remind yourself that a thousand times in paper piecing because it's very different than your typical quilting, okay? So now that I've got that right there, I am going to stitch that real quick. Okay, so the next piece we're going to sew on is this A4 piece. And don't ask me why, but this piece was my nemesis the entire time I was working on this quilt. I couldn't, I don't know, for whatever reason, you may be awesome at this, but for me, I couldn't wrap my head around the size piece that this needed to be. The most helpful information that I can give you is when you are doing this piece and all the other pieces essentially, but this piece has this really long one right here. And if you don't get this right, this point will not be in the corner. So no pressure but if you can imagine all right if you can imagine like a mirror right here at the edge of this piece you want your fabric to mirror that okay so we're gonna turn it over and your piece is going this way this awkward business right here can you see this there we go um, 
I figured out was the best shaped piece. I would always rather have too much fabric on this piece than any of the other pieces, than not enough, okay? So, when I did this piece, it was very large and kind of weird, okay? But if you can see how if I trace my fingers like this, and then back down, I'm gonna have plenty of fabric on this one, okay? So again, too much is way better than not enough. Okay, so I'm gonna go and stitch this real quick and then I will show you. Okay, and there we have it. It is stitched and it covers that corner really nicely and you can start to see exactly how your points are gonna line up. It's starting to look real, folks. Okay, so next step. Don't get your hopes up just yet. We have to do the top points here. Take your handy postcard again, and you're just gonna keep going around. That A4 piece was the real kicker. Everything else from here, totally cool. And while you're doing this, keep your scraps like this. Cause like I said, most of these you can do from just big weird shaped scraps of fabric. But um, yeah. Like this, this could be a good piece. You'll learn as you keep going along, okay? So now let's do A5, which is a bit of a longer one, okay? So flip it back over. Make sure everything is nice and tight. Don't make it loose and weird there. Right sides together. Okay? Make sure it covers all the way at this point, all the way down to where that dotted line is right there. Okay, I stitch between A4 and A5, fold it, and you can see down here how it's working out, why it doesn't really matter if you stitch just a tiny bit over right here, okay? Because you're building from the back layer up higher, okay? So there is that. Don't worry about all this stuff either. You will trim it up in the end. Okay, so press that nice and good. Okay, next we are going to sew between A4 and A5. No, I'm sorry, A5 and A6 here, okay? This one, again, ignore like the really weird shaped pieces because that's just how it's gonna be, okay? You wanna make sure that it goes below your dotted line here and above your dotted line here. That way there is plenty of space. Make sure the fabric beneath it is pushed up nice and tight. You can really see this point, this point, and this point. This right here, I'm going to show you where one of my, not necessarily errors are, but I cut it really close, okay? So you can see right here, I didn't have enough fabric to fold, to really fold over. I would have liked to have had this go a lot higher in here so that when I trim, it'll be nice and solid. But truth be told, the point ends right here. Okay, can you see that? My hand out of the way. Um, the point ends right here. So I will have just enough right there. We'll see when I trim it up how it goes. But you know, um, a lot of this, as you do more of these, it'll just become more and more second nature, okay? So let's get our postcard out again. Okay, here's the first instance where we've come into it. I've sewn here and here. If you get to the point, just pull up that just a little bit, okay? You're gonna rip the postcard. Not a, I mean, the, the pattern paper, not a big deal. You're not saving it anyways, right? Okay, so there's that. And then let's trim along here. Whoops, trim a little bit more where it's a little thicker. Okay, now we're gonna work on the last of the Starburst pieces. And we'll sew this right now. Okay, there we go. We got our last green piece on there. Okay, same thing again. And you will just get used to this repetitive motion. Okay, remember that weird piece that I told you? Don't throw pieces like this away. This is why, because it just so happens to be that these two pieces, this uh, A9 and A8, 
are gonna be really handy for your cutoff scraps for these pieces, okay? So, let's press that down nice and tight and let's get started sewing on our last ones. And there you have it, both the bottom ones are done. This is another instance where it would have been nice to have a little bit of extra fabric, but honestly, it is not the end of the world when you're doing 40 of these. So you can pick and choose exactly how particular you are going to be, okay? So, last step, cutting. I like to use this ruler right here. It is a ruler from the Gadget Girls. It is a six by 12 ruler and I use it absolutely everywhere when I'm sewing. It's one of my favorite ones. It's a little big and chunky, but it gives you something really nice to hold on to on this side. So what you're going to do now is press down really nice and tight on this part, okay? Because you don't want any slippage or any of the fabric to get wrinkled underneath while you're doing it, okay? So cut, paper, fabric, everything, right along those dotted lines, okay? Doesn't matter what order you cut them in because they're all gonna get cut anyways, but press nice and tight against this side, okay? If you can hear that, that's my kids in the background. Ta-da! And here is your finished piece, right here. Okay, all nice and tight, edges are perfect. Now's the fun part. Go on the back and rip off the paper. Make sure you grab at your seams when you're doing this because you don't wanna pull at your fragile seams. I actually saved this part until I had all 40 of them done. I mean, all, um, yeah, all 40 of them done. So, you know, to each his own. If you wanna do it one at a time or if you wanna do it all 40 and have this massive stack of paper, also, for these little pointy ones, you can get your seam ripper up in there. Don't grab your seams, but pull off the paper there. While I'm thinking of this, because I should have mentioned it earlier, and I will stick this clip at the beginning of the video, but while I'm thinking about this, you want to use a small stitch, okay? Because that is what's going to perforate the paper while you're going. Uh, don't go for your typical two point or 1.8 or anything. If you have like a 1.6 or even a 1.4, use that okay instead of the other there you go Ta-da! and if you're wondering about this piece right here look it's not perfect but it is going to fall perfectly in my quarter of an inch okay so when i go to sew another piece on here and i do my quarter inch seam it's gonna fall right in there and there you have it that is one of the starbursts on the Atomic Starburst Quilt Pattern by Violet Craft. If you have any other questions on modern quilting, you can visit www.icstarsquilting.com. Thanks so much for watching.